awarenessreport.tv. Um, today, we're going to be discussing uh, mental illness. And we're going to be talking about, is mental illness a mental disorder or is it demonic oppression? And we're going to be talking to uh, Evangelist Fernando Perez, who is a deliverance minister, as I am. Uh, he has trained me in deliverance ministry. Uh, but Brother Fernando, uh, tell us a little bit. I mean, we've been on a, I've been on a lot of ventures with you, you know, in the deliverance uh, ministry, uh, dealing with individuals who have been diagnosed with mental disorders. Uh, I remember one time that we did at the uh, ranch, um, it was a young lady with, uh, had been diagnosed with multiple personalities. Right. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Sure, yes, yes. Um, yeah, you know, for about 15 years, let me just uh, uh, say a little bit about, you know, what I've been doing. I'm, you know, I'm an evangelist, I'm also a pastor, uh, and uh, especially working in the area of deliverance, you know, helping people to be delivered from uh, a lot of times demonic strongholds, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, we can call. Um, you know, um, I've seen over the years many people coming to us, especially battling with, you know, what we call, you know, uh, you know, the world calls mental illness. You right. know, we call, you know, demonic oppression because basically that's what it is. You know, and this, uh, uh, with this young lady that we had a chance to pray for, you know, you were there with me. Uh, you know, they you know, told me the people that brought her to us mentioned that she, you know, she grew up in a foster home and, uh, you know, uh, battled with rejection all her life and, uh, you know, she pretty much hated herself and, uh, you know, she battled with suicide, you know, cutting herself and all this stuff and so when they described to me that, you know, she, she was, you know, been in doctors, seeing doctors for many years, you know, they could not help her because she wanted to kill herself and she was diagnosed with all uh, types of medication. All, all types of right. medication and she was diagnosed with, uh, you know, uh, having mental illness, you know, and uh, and they described to us what was happening to her and I, you know, I knew from the get-go that that was what she, this young lady was battling was demonic oppression, you know, and um, so, you know, when she came uh, you know, as a pastor, you know, as a minister, you know, uh, you know, we, the, the Bible, you know, tell us, the Bible, you know, tell us to, to pray for the sick, to pray for those who are under oppression. So, right. you know, we, we lay hands in, uh, on her and start praying, and I'm telling you, you know, you remember very clear oh, that, you know, the, yeah. you know, this young girl started manifesting all kinds of demonic spirits, and right. it was, she one was, after another. Yeah, one, one after, after the another. other, you know, spirits of uh, 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 depression, a spirit of suicide, a spirit of, you know, uh, uh, and on and on and on. Well, how do you know what spirit it is? Because, I mean, a lot of times, like I said, when I notice you're praying, you will call out certain spirits specifically. Right. Now, when that happens, can you tell the viewers what happens when you call out these spirits specifically? For example, spirit of depression. Right. Spirit of schizophrenia. Yeah. You know, before I, I explain that, let me, you know, let me just uh, take our viewers to the Word of God because, Praise you know, God. that's, that's what right. we, you know, what we stand upon, you know, we, you know, uh, everything we do, it's in alignment with the Word of God. Right. Amen. You know, that's the standard for our living. And so, but this is what the Word of God say in a book of Ephesians. It's a passage that's well known to all of us. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, uh, this is what the Word of God says, For we wrestle not against flesh or blood, but is against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in a heavenly place. And so, you know, uh, I say this all the time, that, uh, you know, I, you know, some people, 80% of all their problems that they are battling right now, even some of our viewers, you know, uh, some of you, all of the problems you're battling right now, a lot of times it's all 
uh, uh, spiritual problems, you know, and so, uh, and the Bible say that we fight not against people, flesh and blood, it's, but it's against the unseen, against the demonic realm. And so, you know, uh, when we are praying for people, deliverance prayers, like this young, you know, lady that came, uh, you know, we, before we even lay hands on people, we prayed up, we right. asked God to give us the the wisdom how to minister to that person. And so as we, you know, a lot of times just by talking to people and they, you know, a lot of times telling as their story, I can, you know, a lot of times pick up things that is happening, right. okay, uh, because the the natural realm, a lot of times, is a reflection of what's happening in the spirit realm. You know, a person in their right mind that, that is not under oppression, depression, a lot of times, even demon possession, a person in the right mind, you will not have a, just a desire to kill it. There's themselves. And, and you said it right there. The, the spirits go after the mind. It goes I, after the mind. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I was explaining to him about some of my uh, d deliverance experiences. He said, well, I think it's all in the mind. Well, of course it's all in the mind. It's all you in know, the that's mind. why we have, like you said, that we have the helmet of salvation right. that we put on us to protect. You know, the Bible talks about how the fiery darts, the thoughts right. that come in, that the enemy will place in a person's mind to plant that seed, of, whether it be depression, whether it be anxiety or panic attacks or whatever right. thing, these all start with the mind. And they all say the majority of all illnesses, uh -huh. even cancer, starts within a person's mind. Right. And that's, you know, it goes back to the to the, the same thing, the Word of God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, the Bible says this, Do not be conformed to the patterns of the world, mm -hmm. but be transformed right. by the renewing of your mind. When we have an unrenewed mind, guess what? We open doors to demonic attacks. Right. You know, and, and I, I, I know, let me give, uh, well, let me share a little bit quickly about the story, finish uh, talking about this young lady, but then I'm going to give to all our viewers, because some of you, you know, you're watching and you're like, you know, but, you know, come on, break down. What do you mean by, you know, uh, demonic oppression? What, the, what are the signs of demonic oppression? I personally, over the years, God, you know, have given to me uh, 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 30 things related to, I'm not going to mention all all the 30 things right. but 30 signs that shows if a person is battling with demonic uh, okay attacks in their mind mental illness and so all this stuff uh, you know it's signs it point that there's something spiritual there that shouldn't be well this young you know? lady was suicidal she was suicidal and, and so when they started laying hands on her but because we already had a little uh, 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 a brief uh, uh, you know history of her life what she was battling with such as you know depression uh, uh, you know abandonment issue right rejection and so because I know a lot behind a lot of those things that we think that is normal there's demonic spirits behind it I've heard you you know as you've taught me myself when you say spirit of neglect abandonment rejection manifest in Jesus name right what happens is man and you know like I said for people that aren't used to seeing what happens I mean these individuals sometimes, you know, go into convulsions. They uh, sometimes, you know, the uh, pupils in the back of, the, you know, right. the, the, go behind their eyelids where it's just white. All types of things happen, you know. A lot oh, of times sometimes they're coughing and things like that. Can you explain coughing, why does that happen? Why does that getting happen? Getting violently, a lot exactly. of times getting, you know, start to want to, you know, yeah. punch us, you know. All this why is because there's a spiritual force that has overtake them through doors you know right. and, and, and doors what are the doors doors are legality there are weights uh, that the enemy a lot of times have influence in our lives for instance somebody that battles with rejection or battles with suicidal thought somehow there was an open door, you know, and a lot of times it's through sin, through generational curses, right. you know, through the uh, person's even uh, unobedience to the will of God right. or rebellion, you know, stubbornness, uh, you know, anger. All of this stuff opens a pore, opens a door to the spiritual realm to influence that person. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And it was interesting when you were, these spirits were being cast out of this young lady here, she kept on feeling, I'm feeling light. Right. You know, well, I'm feeling light. She kept yeah. stating that. And, uh, you know, I find it interesting, man. I think I shared this one in our last podcast 
that they did a study some years ago where they had individuals on a deathbed, and it was actually a university. And uh, they would put these individuals on a deathbed on this hospice bed, and they did this for about 700 patients. And when the person would die, the bed scale would lift up five ounces. So basically what they came to the conclusion, this is a university, second university, said they'll, the soul, you know, which is our mind, our emotions, our will, the real person is about the weight of five ounces, which is the weight of about a hummingbird. So if you could imagine, you know, when Jesus talked about, you know, he, he cast that one demon out of that man that came out of the cave, remember he said, well, we are legion, a legion and a legions yeah. could be thousands. So can you imagine how much lighter he might have felt? But right. each time when we pray for people, the first thing they usually say is how light they feel. Exactly. That is this, that, that's what this young lady experienced because all her life, as you say, you know, cutting herself, you know, you know, cutting herself, thinking about suicide and all this stuff, you know, feeling rejected by everybody and felt, you know, uh, bad from the moment she woke up until the moment she went to bed. And then we prayed for her and we, you know, one, let me say this, one of the things that I love about the deliverance ministry is this, because deliverance ministry goes to the root of issue. There it is. That's See, right. that's why, you know, I believe in counseling, I believe in godly counseling, but there are certain things when you're dealing, I want the, our viewers to understand this, when you're dealing with a spiritual thing, when you're dealing with a spiritual problem, you cannot fix a spiritual problem with natural resource. That's right. Okay, you cannot take a pill, okay, and send the demon away. If it's demonic, you have to go to the root of issue and you have to cast it out. And that's why the Word of God, you know, give us, can you imagine in the book of uh, Mark chapter 16, okay, uh, 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 verse 15 and, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, verse actually 16, uh, uh, when Jesus sent out the disciples, before he even sent them away, when he commissioned them to go out to the world, before even these, he sent them out, what he, he gave them, gave them authority to cast out evil spirits. That's right. To heal the sick. And so... Because like you said, that's the root. That is the, the root. Of and, and see, one thing about counseling, you know, I was a correctional counselor for the California Department of Corrections for 13 years. And uh, it's absolutely true. There's some demons that will not come out just mm. by counseling. No. You know? Uh, we deal with all the time, you know, people that have been involved in many drug programs. There's a lot of good, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good programs. And counseling is really good, especially after one is delivered. There to set go. up yes. safeguards so these spirits don't come back in. Right. But that's one of the reasons why I felt the Lord compelled me to go into full-time ministry. Because, you know, working 13 years, and man, that was a wonderful experience. But I was like, you know, in my occupation there, I could not go to the root of the issue which is going to cast out that demonic spirit mm -hmm. and like you said I mean it's so true that you know like I said counseling godly counseling godly because ungodly counseling could allow more spirits no, to come in no. and, and some certain medications mm -hmm. you know could allow spirits to come in right. you know the, and especially you know with counseling it, it always it's always good when you're going for counseling if you're battling with stuff that you get somebody that is on fire for God, right. somebody that really understands the spiritual things. Because uh, you know, for my you know, for almost 15 years, people have come to me over and over again, and literally have spent sometimes thousands of dollars in counseling. They have got them nowhere. Why? Because a lot of times those counselors were not they. It was not their, it was their fault. Is that they didn't understand the spiritual principles. Right. They didn't understand that their problem was the spirit. And so, you know, for you to go into somebody to counsel you, if they don't understand the spiritual problems, probably they were just going to give you some good advice. Right. Which is not going to change nothing. Well, remember that time you um, were praying for that lady that had the meth issue. The meth, yeah. And right. remember she had these voices and things that were going on in her head. And uh, like I said, she's been in many programs and things like that to no avail. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. That we, this is what right. we did at the barn. Well, yeah. What happened with this story? Uh, 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 you know, with this young lady, uh, she was bound up by meth. You know, that her addiction was meth. Uh, you know, and uh, so finally, you know, uh, uh, two friends of her, uh, you know, convinced her to, you know, to come out of that. 
you know, lifestyle and, and then go into, uh, you know, one of those programs that helps people, you know, to, you know, to come out of, you know, drug addictions. And I think it was a, a Teen Challenge, which is an awesome program. And, um, you know, so, but according to what they said was that they wouldn't, they could not take her in, even though there was an opportunity for her to go, you know, to, to get herself out of drugs and to join Teen Challenge, but they could not take her because she was, she could not stop in getting high. So she was, you know, all day long under the influence. She could not, you know, go in. And so uh, what happened is they called me and said, Fernando, you know, we have this, young lady we love her we wanted her to get out of drugs and but you know there's opportunity for her to go in to you know to get herself you know out of the addictions and through you know this you know thing challenge but you know she cannot stop getting high would you please pray for her you know that God somehow give her the strength to let it go you know and so so yeah let's set up an appointment we did I you came with me you know and so uh, when they mentioned to me a little bit about her situation, about her story, you know, I I, I just went after that demonic strongholds of addiction. And, and one thing I noticed that before you, a lot of time, perform the deliverance, you know, in the name of Jesus, you counsel them. So you, yeah. you, you do counsel them, you get counsel. the information. Yes. I, I noticed that we will sit down and then right. we will take them through uh, a series of questions. Exactly. You know, but at the same time, you're doing counseling, but you're setting it up to go to the root right. of the issue. If I talk to somebody mm -hmm. for five minutes, I can tell them what is going on in their right. lives. I can tell if their their, their problems are spiritual or not. Uh, and let me say this to all our viewers, I don't believe that every problem that we have is spiritual, but I believe that some people, 80% of all their problem is demonic, yes. is spiritual. And so, you know, and uh, and guess what? Even if your problem is not spiritual, it won't hurt you if you go for help. Uh, you don't right. have nothing to lose, you know? Right. And so, uh, uh, and so by talking to people, by having a, a godly counseling, I, you know, I ask them some questions. They tell me, you know, they're honest. They tell me what is going on with them, you know, and then by... You know, five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. We can tell. We we already have a blueprint how to go, how, what to target in, through prayer. And so, in, when she mentioned about her history with drug drug addiction, you know, when I lay hands on her, and I, you know, you remember you I say, said spirit of meth. Yeah. And when you said that, and I, I well, actually what I said was uh, uh, every spirit, every demonic spirit that came through meth. Uh, right. Because see, the drug addiction was a door, was right. a pore, was a way for those demonic entities to come into her life. Uh, right. And so when I say every demonic spirit that came uh, through meth uh, manifesting Jesus' and name, it was theatrical. Uh, it was. It, it, it was, was one of the most theatrical. theatrical. Oh, <laughs> and, and literally, I had to go grab a huge garbage can. Because this uh, young woman, oh my gosh, what she unleashed out of her. And, and she started throwing up. And I, until this day, 50, almost 15 years ministering the heirs of deliverance, I have never seen, and I have never seen to this day, somebody throwing up like that. And then it, when she got done, what was the first thing she said? When she, when we got to the end, when we delivered from, you know, the Jesus delivered her through us, you know, as a vessel, because we don't heal, we That's don't right. deliver nobody, it's Him. We are just, in, you know, vessels in the hand of Jesus that He can use us to touch the multitude, you know, right. to touch the people. And so, but when we pray for her, you know, after we got to the end, you know, we got done, and the first thing that came out of this lady's mouth, we didn't, you know, uh, this Probably. was not made up. Right. Ask, how do you feel? Because that's what, you know, we always ask, how do you feel? And she said, I'm feeling that there, there's a hundred pounds have left me and I feel lighter. Right. But that, that, you know, I've heard this over and over again. But one thing, Ray, that it blessed me so much is that she said this. I, I, I don't remember. She said, I do not remember when, 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 uh, when it was the last time that, was, that I was able to hear my own voice. Right. Because I have so much torment in my mind all these years. 
And what did she say it was? She felt it was like bees she, that's in what her she head. She said, I, I felt all my life, there's bees in my mind, all this noise, all this confusion, all this stuff. She said, I could not hear my own voice for all these years. And when she got delivered, her ears got popped open and she was able to hear her own voice. She and said, this is peace. weird. And the peace. She said, this is weird. I can hear my own voice talking. She said, I, right. I was never able to. Something that we take for granted. Uh, you know, and see, going back, like so when I work at the correctional facilities and community schools and uh, I get called in to pray for people that have ADHD, you know, attention deficit disorder. And a lot of times, you know, these individuals are in the classroom. Okay, they're trying to pay attention, but can you imagine if you're trying to pay attention in a classroom and you're hearing bees? How well are you going to do taking notes when the teacher is giving instructions on a math equation, right? right? I remember I was at Juvenile Hall and I was talking, you know, I was giving a Bible study and we were talking about this topic and this young man came over. He just heard us over, you know, over talking in the Bible study and he sat down really angry. And mm -hmm. I just went, I said, well, what, what's going on with you? He said, well... When I'm sitting in class, he said, I'll be trying to pay attention to the instruction. And all of a sudden, it's like a, a, a big flock of bees, not bees, but flies, will come in front of me. Nobody else can see the flies wow. but me. He said, I'll get mad, walk out the classroom, and people wonder why I'm so angry and have attitude. You know, but when we're able to go in and cast those spirits out, mm -hmm. spirits that are causing voices, guess what? They don't need the psychotropic medication anymore. Right. They don't need the Seroquel and the Depakote anymore because, like you said, we've gone to the root of the issue. So right. a lot of times, it's not people always assume somebody that's special ed, special education, is not intelligent. No, a lot of times they're just distracted, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what the enemy wants to do is distract us so we cannot find the path. Right? The purpose that God has right. for us. Because Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Right. But how can you really hear his voice if you're hearing all these other voices? And like you said yes. earlier, many times people open up these doors to allow voices and things to come in because of, but well, sometimes it's generational curses, but Generation because of bond. drugs and things like that. And, and even because their own pain. A That's lot of right. times it's because, mm. you know, That's some people, you know, some people and uh, some of our viewers, you know, maybe you've been rejected by all your, uh, through your, you know, by your own family. Maybe you've been abused all your life. Right. right? You know, some people, they, you know, been be abused sexually, verbally, you know, uh, and just been abused. And so there's so much pain and so much much, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, pain inside of them, that, that what was the door for those demonic spirits. For instance, this young girl that we start, you know, sharing her, you know, the, her story, she didn't do nothing to deserve. Is that because of all that abandonment right. issue, all that, you know, the, 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 all that stuff that she went through growing up, you know, it had opened different doors. And because she was not a strong Christian, what happened is those things came right in. You know, the Bible says this, that the enemy, he comes to kill, he steal and destroy. That is the plan of the enemy. And so... And that's why uh, uh, without God in our lives, we are vulnerable. Can't do that. We are vulnerable. And so, uh, 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 but... Uh, well, you talking about legalities, you know, what kind of started this uh, whole series off is we had done a podcast on tattooing. Right. And not going to go deep into that, but go on to, you know, our site, uh, awarenessreport.tv, and you'll be able to see that video that... Uh, my pastor and I did on um, tattooing, but tattooing is another door, another a legality that opens people up unto, and like I said, you don't just take our word for it. We have interviews from, right. uh, you know, witches that talk about how these things open up portals, a tattoo artist and the martial artist mm -hmm. that talks about his own demonic oppression, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, he had a dragon tattoo uh, on his arm, and like I said, we watched the video. We're gonna go more into that. We're not. We're not gonna to touch on that now. But we'll leave a link below uh, this uh, video. Amen. Yeah. So uh, uh, I wanna uh, 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 also 
uh, uh, you know, say this to everyone, you know, all our viewers is watching. Some people, uh, uh, you know, probably they've been, you know, diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and they're getting tormented. And, and what happened is, uh, you know, they go to a lot of times to doctors, and we don't have nothing against doctors. You know, I believe they're a blessing from God. You know, but a lot of, as I as I always say, you cannot solve a spiritual problem with natural resource right. and a lot of people they're getting even worse than what they are you know because of some of this drugs they're taking mm. in that's right you know I, I, I believe that there are some people in mental institution that they shouldn't be there right they should have received deliverance prayer and they would not be there but they are getting worse and worse. Why? Because they are, you know, they, they keep getting, you know, into, you know, uh, keep getting, uh, you know, used to, you know, all those different types of drugs and, and, and it's destroying them even more. Well, it causes all types of, you know, side effects because a lot yeah. of times what they'll say is, you know, with ADHD or depression, the first thing they say, well, your serotonin levels are low, so we got to get some of these pharmaceutical drugs to help balance the brain chemistry but like I said the word pharmacy comes from the Greek word pharmakia which means sorcery. Sorcery is when you open up the portal of your soul which is your mind, your emotions, and your will and you allow spirits to come in. The Rx actually on the pharmaceutical, I'm not saying all pharmaceuticals are bad but I'm just saying there are some that are very bad out there and right. some that are good that I believe God maybe anointed some scientists to bring forth some things to bring forth a remedy to illnesses but the rx symbol a lot of people don't really understand what that means even some nurses doesn't know what it means but that is actually the symbol for horus wow. and and horus like i said was uh known as you know one of the sons of osiris osiris was the father of babylon these are pagan gods and Horus is also known, I mean, Horus is actually the eye that you see on the dollar bill. That's the eye of Horus. Now, Horus is also known as the light bearer. Now, the light bearer in Latin means Lucifer. Isn't that right. interesting? So, a lot of times, you know, the Rx symbol also is a you know, symbol for recipe, you know, from the, from the Egyptians. So, what does this do? Like I said, they would pay homage to the gods of God, you know, the, the gods and goddesses of Babylon, of Lucifer, to get these different incantations to put them in the medication they would give them to the individuals. But what would happen is a lot of times it would open up more doors for other spirits to come in. It would, a lot of times it would subdue, you know, the uh, ailment, but then later on, over a period of time, as we see with many individuals they'll start taking this medication oh it's working you know the, right. the depression's gone but then a year or two a year later mm -hmm. what happens now they're getting panic attacks right now they've went from one medication to five from five medications to ten right and so on yeah that's it you know the um um, as I say, a, a lot of a, a lot of this spiritual problems that you know people face all the time. The reason why you know, uh, and we might have somebody watching right now that think, man, this is crazy what these people are talking about. But see, you cannot understand spiritual problems or spiritual things with carnal mind. Right. You know, right. I know that some of the stuff we're talking right now, some people think that this is crazy, but you cannot understand the spiritual no, problems yeah. with your with your mind. You have to understand spiritually, and uh, and so you know, as I say, we have plenty of stories and uh, you know testimonies to share. You know, uh, for instance, about the you know uh, one of the testimonies that we. Uh, you know that we have was a, of a, a young man that came uh, and you were with me uh, we prayed for this uh, uh, for this guy he's from India and he was bound up by Ooh. all kinds of demonic spirits as well and but uh, his story is so uh, interesting that because what happened is he used to battle a lot in his mind uh, a lot of mental torment in his mind uh, and so he was trying to t to get his driver's license, right? You know to you know pass on the DMV test, mm -hmm. you know the reading test, uh, but he could not pass because he will go in 
to you know to get the test and he would write out you know he would study really hard you know write you know and then get to the test and write all put all the right answers but then that that's it that's what he said he said then he would hear those voices in his mind saying erase you put the wrong the, the, the you know they are all wrong and so he would erase the right answers that he just put and he would put the wrong ones mm. and for eight times he failed uh, 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 actually for for seven times he failed to take uh, to get his driver's license because he didn't pass on the test all right so listen guys uh i'm gonna uh, give you some uh, uh symptoms of demonic strongholds of the mind things that we've learned over the years you know uh ministering to people uh, you know uh so uh, this is how i personally identify if there's a you know mental illness you know like a demonic oppression uh you know i call i usually i i call demonic strongholds of right. the mind but here are the symptoms of people that usually battle with demonic oppression and demonic strongholds usually they have these signs in their lives well number one confusion people that are constantly just battling all mm. kinds of confusion in their minds right. they don't have peace in their minds with because of confusion another thing is double mindedness okay double minds another 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 symptom uh, another one unholy patterns of thinking Okay, unholy, so lustful thoughts. Lustful thoughts. I, I, we're talking about lust, perversion, right. you know, immorality in their minds. It's all symptoms of demonic strongholds in the mind. Another thing, guilt. You mentioned today, you know, guilt. Uh, guilt is another one. Condemnations. Right. That's another one. You know, accusation. Mm -hmm. You know, constantly hearing uh, thoughts of accusation in their minds. So like paranoid. And, uh, paranoid. Yeah. There you go. And then another one. And this is pretty big. This is one. This one here. A lot of people better with this. Hearing demonic voices. Hearing voices uh, telling them to commit suicide. Mm. You know, to use drugs. You know, to cut themselves. People in ministry, you know, even serving in ministry, don't want to admit, but they, uh, we've come across people in ministry that will right. hear these type of voices. They hear in on an ongoing basis. Right. And so, you know, hearing demonic voices, you know, uh, 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 insanity, people right. that seem they're going to go crazy, you know, they, 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 they're just going to insane in their minds, right. you know, they just want to, some of them, they, you know, the, it's very typical people that battles with insanity is that they just want to take off, they just want to run, right. you know, they just want to, you know, go away, there's just so much oppression and so much, uh, you know, uh, 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 that they battle with, you know, in, in their minds, of the thoughts of going crazy. Crazy, right. you know, losing their memory, losing their minds, you know. Going so going crazy, thinking yeah, about going crazy, right? Thinking about going crazy, you know. Uh, 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 loss of memory, right? Okay. Uh, lies, constantly mm. battling lies, lies in their minds. Oh yeah, that, that See, opens doors. Oh like, yes, lies and there. lies. Another thing, deceptions. Right deception it's another sign you know false beliefs right. okay false beliefs about themselves about life about god false and, beliefs. and our next actually our, our, our next podcast we're going to that we're talking about you we dealt with people who are involved in greek letter organizations or the right. freemasons and the mental torment right that has come through that and the manifestations that happen in jesus name when these things are called out right but like I said, false beliefs, all false, based on false beliefs. All based on false beliefs, false ideologies, right. all that, you know, and, uh, you know, I think I mentioned doubt and unbelief, you know, worry, you know, people are constantly oh, yeah. battling worry, yeah. you know, and, uh, 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 you know, nightmares, people are tormented. I've seen this, people battles in their minds, always nightmares and at night they cannot sleep they're they're afraid of the dark they are afraid uh, of being by themselves mm -hmm. you know just nightmares and and uh, living a horror movie right that's it you know migraines that's another thing migraines mm -hmm. you know constant migraines uh uh you know we mentioned about lustful thoughts you know fantasy perversion you know then suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. Suicidal thoughts. Like you let that could be linked a lot. A lot of times, it's linked to depression. Right. Suicidal thoughts, self harm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 
uh, and then uh, thoughts of you know of killing people, mm. you know, uh, murderous, mur murder, you know, thinking about murdering people, you know, revenge. A lot of gangs have that, okay. right? Yeah, right? Yeah, a lot, a lot of gangs. They open the door for that, you know. Right. And because uh, these gangs have these little rituals that go on, and there's drugs and things like that, which open up doors. Right. And then you know, skepticism, religiosity, passiveness. You know all those things. They are uh, they are battles that, that people go through in a, on uh, you know, on a daily basis. And and, and you know when we go out to the correctional facilities, um, you know, like I said, people don't want to admit that they're hearing voices because they right. get teased and everything like that. And but when you're able to present the truth of the Word of God, you know, the understanding. Proverbs four seven says, "And all thy getting, get understanding." Okay, because you can't solve a problem until you first understand it you see right. so when you're able to present this man you just see the relief that comes across their faces I mean mm -hmm. they'll come up to us right. later and be like you know can you pray can right. you pray for us whether it's you know at a, at a meeting or right. at an institution or a place we talk and they feel so relieved because it's like I'm tired of taking this medication and 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 beyond that is because somebody understand it. there it is see as some of those people they, if they they don't want to admit why because they don't want people to mock them thank you and That's over right. and over again as a minister people come to me and say you know what i'm battling with this thing. i'm hearing voices i'm hearing voices to tell me to commit suicide right. you know to jump off a bridge and if i go and tell people this they will mock me and think oh, i'm crazy and so a lot of these people they are battling a battle that that uh, the average people think that uh, uh, they're crazy, but they are not crazy. And I want to say, if you're battling of hearing voice, you've been tormented in your mind, guess what? I want to say this to you, uh, and I hope this word brings joy and brings... Well, it brings you know, joy. It just brings peace. Right. You know, I, I hope that this word brings, you know, joy and, and brings you hope because, uh, you know, you are not crazy. If you're hearing voice, if you've been battling with your mind, you are not crazy. You know, you, you need deliverance. Right. You do need those things to be broken off your life. You know, those things to be cast out. But, you know, so many people, they come when they tell us, and we don't mock, we say, hey, I understand this. I say this all the time. People come, a lot of times they're very skeptical. They don't want to share what they're battling because they don't want to be disappointed again. Oh, here goes another one mocking me. Another one thing that I'm crazy. And when I another tell them, say I need more medication. Right. And then when I tell them, so listen, I've heard, oh, and I've been doing this for a while, you know, there's nothing you're going to say that's going to be frightening or going to make me to think that you're crazy. So they feel like that, that hope. Right. You know, they, they feel this sense of hope while well, finally somebody understands it. You know, I was in Atlanta um, a couple weeks ago, and I was over a house praying for a lady that had a daughter that was on uh, some ADHD medication. Uh, she was diagnosed uh, with bipolar, not just ADHD, but bipolar, where, you know, you get mood swings. Right. And... Uh, when the young lady came home, the young girl came home, um, you know, immediately the mom says, you know, because I was telling her, hey, yeah, I think your daughter needs prayer. You shouldn't put her on this medication. This medication causes all types of, you know, chemical imbalances and it messes up the liver and things like that, which right. it does. And she said, well, my daughter really was talking about wanting to get off the ADHD medication. So as soon as she came in, to make a long story short, she was explaining to me that she was just on the bus. And she said, I was just on the bus and I was feeling good. Then all of a sudden, I just got so angry and I wanted, she wanted to just attack people. And she didn't understand where I was coming from. I said, well, can I pray for you? And then when we prayed, okay, mm -hmm. I'm again, this young lady started manifesting, started convulsing. And her neck, you know, and, and just doing those things. And she felt like, she told me she was literally felt her body freeze and her, and her, you know, feet get cold and she couldn't move. And all of a sudden, she felt something just come out of her. Mm -hmm. Checked back with mother a couple days later and said, man, I don't know what happened, but she has just been so peaceful See? and just, you know, good sleeps and everything like that. And it's like Jesus came to deliver because who the Son is set free mm -hmm. is free indeed. Yeah, and once again, go back to what we've been saying. He went to the root of the issue. There it is. How many medication this young lady have taken? How many people maybe have tried to help her? 
and they were not able to. Why? Because right. her problem was generational problem, or it, 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 was, it was an oppression. It was demonic oppression. You know, another one big is depression. Can you explain to us, because I mean, I've watched, like I said, uh, even early on, uh, over and over, dealing with individuals who had spirits of depression. And which was linked to periods of suicide. Right. Can you share a couple of experiences uh, uh, like that? Yeah, this you know one of the most frequent you know prayer requests that we always get is you know depression. You know people are you know a lot of people are depressed because uh, 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 once again uh, 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 there's many ways, but you know a lot of times abandonment rejection you know they feel that they they're you know hopeless and, and nobody loves them so they go to, into this stage they become an easy prey you know to the enemy and then all of a sudden they are bound by depression they don't have a desire to wake up and they are all and so once again go goes back to the the thing we're talking about well what's happening at that point i mean what's where the mechanics was going on behind the scenes in the spirit realm Mm -hmm. When a person's feeling depressed, what, what what is happening? What are the spirits doing? No, well, the you know the spirit. Uh, uh, we have to remember the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, if it's you know through depression or any other way, his enemy is uh, the, the the enemy's uh, job is to make sure that he you know first op finds the door. Once the door is open, the enemy comes in. And, and overtake it. Mm -hmm. There are people that we pray, especially with depression, that they feel that there's a a, 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 a cloud of darkness cloud. hovering over them, or sometimes a, a, a heaviness that hover over them, mm -hmm. a, a, a heaviness that that hovers over them. You know, they feel a, a, a weight in their shoulders. They feel all and, this and the stuff. thoughts. They, they'll, and say, then, they'll say like fleeting thoughts. Right, and, and and then usually I see that the spirit of depression. Uh, works in hand in hand with the spirit of, of suicide mm. because uh, people that that battles with depression for you know for a long period of time eventually uh, uh, they try to commit suicide right they are walk hand in steal, hand steal kill and destroy exactly they try to destroy That's, their lives mm. and then eventually yeah, exactly steal their joy and mm -hmm. basically kill them and kill them, and so you know, and uh, 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 a lot of times because, uh, and I see a lot of young people battling with depression. But but, uh, but you know, it's funny when when you pray for to be with depression. I notice that I feel good, I feel happy. I feel it, yeah. And, when, and, and like I said again, I feel light That's after it. you prayed for them, right? And then some people, you know, uh, 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 you know, to parents, you know, some of the people out there, they're, they're battling with depression because of the uncertainties of life. You know, well, right now we're living, there's so much things going on in the world, there's so much uncertainty, and so people are frightened. And so, and because there's no, you know, uh, they, they're not sure, they're, you know, about their future, a lot of times those things open those doors, you know, through fear, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, anxiety and all this stuff. So uh, it goes back to, you know, uh, what I've been saying, the spiritual, the, you know, the, uh, if we don't take care of the spiritual uh, side of the problem, you know, we become an easy prey to the so, enemy. So, so the root of panic attacks. Right. Spiritual. Right. Okay. And like I said, panic attack, fear, uh, you know, anger, uh, all those things. There are spiritual things that people think of that is just common. Come on, is it common for somebody to punch a wall? No. Is it common for somebody to want to kill somebody? No. You know, I, I say this all the time. A person in their right mind don't do this stuff. Well, how do we safeguard ourselves? Can you tell our viewers how do they safeguard themselves from opening up these doors? Like, I, I've noticed that, you know, you, you've talked about in your meetings, jealousy can right. open up a door. Right. Right? Um, unforgiveness. Right. Tell, tell us, you know, and we've already talked about, you know, tattooing drugs and things like that. Well, how do, how do we be led to make sure that we don't open up these doors? Right. Well, you know, uh, I... See, uh, I have to go back into the Word of God. You know, I, as a pastor, you know, my uh, uh, my beliefs, uh, 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 you know, 
uh, the foundation of my beliefs is in the Word of God. So I have always to bring back to the Word. You know, for somebody that might be watching us right now and you're battling with all this stuff and maybe the stuff you've been saying, it makes sense to you. You can you see that, but still you are not serving the Lord. Then, you know, you are, you're an easy prey to the enemy. You know, uh, uh, there is, yeah, there's a solution. But for those who are willing to surrender and to, to walk with God, mm. because He is the only one God is the only one that can keep those demonic powers, those demonic strongholds away from our lives as we surrender to the will of God. Mm. So surrender See, is... Surrender. Surrender making, to the will of yeah. God. You know, a close the doors of sin that gives legality, you know, to the enemy. We talk so much about unforgiveness. You know, a lot of people, they suffer and they are in a bad shape spiritually because of unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness, it's a poison. I always say unforgiveness is a poison that eats a person from the inside mm -hmm. out. It destroys a person. Unforgiveness, jealousy, bitterness, all right. those things, they are doors that, uh, that if we don't close them, if we just leave it open, the enemy come through those doors and all of a sudden, you know, uh, right. there's nothing we can do because listen, and I want to say this, really, uh, I, I hope that our viewers understand this. You cannot, you and I cannot overcome demonic powers, okay? Whatever you can call demonic powers, okay? Evil influence, torment, whatever you want to call. You cannot overcome those things through the power of your own hands. That's right. You cannot overcome, especially fighting against forces that you cannot see it. Mm -hmm. So the way that we fight is going back to the word, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we rest not against principalities and powers. I mean, uh, for we rest not against uh, flesh or blood, but it's against principalities, against powers, against the works of the enemy. How we overcome them, surrendering to the Lord, walking according to His ways. And, 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 uh, and what, uh, what the Lord does is we surrender to Him. He empowers to live a victorious life. That's right, through His Holy Spirit. Because Acts exactly. 1 and 8 says that when we receive the Holy Spirit, we shall receive power. You know, 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. two sixteen. And once we get the Spirit of God, once we become born again by you know, accepting Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, that Spirit... His spirit comes within us and rebirths a new spirit. And we have a new mind. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, we have now the mind of Christ. Right. You see? And if we have the mind of Christ, guess what? The mind of Christ doesn't have anxiety attacks. Right. The right. mind of Christ doesn't get depressed. That's right? It. The right. mind of Christ doesn't have torment or fear or anything like that. So those are things that, you know, are gifted to us, you know, through God's grace right. and mercy and His love that He has for us by... You know, the Father sacrificing His Son on the cross and raising Him from the dead. You know, this the perfect gift that was able to redeem us, right. you know, from a life of torment. You know, for a, a life of curses and things of that sort. Right. But like you said, we have to surrender. And let me say this. I, I want to talk right now uh, to the skepticals. To those who are watching us, you're, you know, you're watching, but you're not really sure about this. Listen, and especially if you're battling with this stuff or you know somebody that is battling. My question to you, are you willing to put this thing in, you know, to, to give a try? You know, you don't have nothing to lose. And, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, maybe you have tried it, all kinds of stuff out there. It has not worked. Now, we're talking about something that you have we have seen over and over again. Weekly. Uh, we like see this it. on a weekly yeah. basis. So, yeah. uh, matter of fact, I just received a, a testimony last night of a young lady that came to our conference. You know, we hold the Healing and Deliverance Conference here in Sacramento, California, and uh, every Saturday. And she came two weeks ago. Right. And this girl, all her life, she was, you know, really bound up by all kinds of stuff. And so she came, we prayed for her, and she felt all this stuff coming out of her. And she mm -hmm. just sent me an image. She would never felt like this before. Wow. Wow. And so, you know, uh, uh, we, you know, uh, our desire with this is not to convince nobody, but our desire is to give information out there. And so that you, you know, open up, you know, your heart. And, and try. If you have tried all kinds of stuff out, uh, out there, why don't you just, you know, 
Ask the Lord to come into your heart, you know, and, and empower you to live a victorious life because God does not want any of us to leave, uh, you know, battling those things. Yeah, and, and he, you know, see, once we receive Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, Hebrews 10 said we can come boldly now before the throne because the blood has washed away our dirty conscience, you right. know. I mean, that's the, you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says we are a new creature in Christ. I mean, that's the good news of the gospel that... Whatever you've done, because many times, you know, guilt could be like a mental illness. People right. are oppressed with guilt. Right. But Christ come to get set us free right. from the Spirit of God. I was actually praying for an individual with guilt. You know, and I sensed that. I discerned that. This individual literally started growling. Same. Growling and just oh, coughed up and threw up. You know, and after that just felt so relieved. So guilt. Mm -hmm. can be a spirit at times, right. you know, but Christ has come to set us free from that. We have a ton of resources, Deliverance Report, uh, dot TV. Uh, my pastor here has a, a, a weekly program, I mean, and he also has these videos archived at Deliverancereport.tv. Um, and I also have them on uh, my site at thugexposed.org, which is a gang and prevention site. So we have a ton of these, and we're going to be coming uh, weekly with these types of videos. And, you know, if you have any questions, please email us. Right. Okay, there's a link below that you can email us. Or you can go to our uh, website, awarenessreport.tv. And also I have a book uh, called Thug Mentality Exposed that the Lord led me to write. And we talk about deliverance. We talk about uh, you know, 88 DHD. This is just my experience working as a correctional counselor at Department of Corrections, and it's basically a spiritual life skills book rooted in the Word of God. So, brother, uh, uh, Pastor Fernando, um, just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, you, like I said, you have a prayer line right. that people can call into. Um, you know, like I said, and like I said, you train me that I now have a, a prayer line right. too, but. You know, tell us a little bit of how that works. How can right. people get in touch with you to uh, receive and obtain prayer? Right. Well, you know, the the best way to you know to stay in touch with us and to you know find out ways that we can you know help you out in your process of deliverance and you know and, and through prayer is by going to my website at deliverancereport.tv and uh, also. Uh, on my website, you can watch us live every day from Monday through Friday, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, as we hold our, our five days miracle and deliverance prayer campaign. Right and it's amazing what God is doing. People have been watching us from all over the world every day. They log in at 7 p.m. and they watch us right there at the comfort of their home. People are getting the, set people, free. Set free I right there at the comfort of their home. I've had people home. tell me just, See, just from watching your recording videos I've had people say they felt things right come out mm -hmm. of them so you yep. know like I said the anointed is capsulated within these right. videos mm -hmm. And uh, so praise God. Yeah, so they can go to my website, as I say, deliverancereport.tv, watch us Monday through Friday, and, uh, you know, and, and that will be a blessing to you. Also, you know, if you like to, uh, you know, uh, to receive more deliverance prayer, you can also go to my YouTube uh, channel. You can go search for Evangelist for in the Press, and you see tons of videos there that will help you in your process of healing and deliverance. And... And beside that, also, I have my prayer line. Right. Our people call us literally from all over the world, and we pray for them. And also, uh, I, uh, I'm offering to the body of Christ, those in need, uh, what I call one hour intensive healing and deliverance prayer right. over the phone or Skype. I can Skype them anywhere they are, and uh, and we can pray for them, you know, uh, do some godly counsel also through the, the Skype, right. and, and also pray for them deliverance prayer. So Great. those. Those are the resources. And, and let me give you our prayer line if you like to get a hold of us to schedule an appointment to receive prayer over the phone or Skype. You can just go to, uh, you can call me at 916 area code 470-9573. Praise God. And, and like I said, we, like, we have a lot of testimonies. You know, if you have any youth that are maybe getting involved, you know, into that street life and you're a little concerned, we have some wonderful testimonies even from you know individuals like the founder of the Mexican Mafia um, individuals that have started gangs that have turned their life around many of these individuals that have had quote-unquote mental illnesses that have overcome right. them 
And you can find those on both of our sites at thugexposed.org and deliverancereport.tv. But please, you know, leave us a message. Go to our site. Get connected with us. Okay? And like I said, we're going to have more videos to come. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channels. And, uh, you know, anything else you want to like to close. I'm going to let my pastor close it out. Well, I think that's it for today. It's been a, such a great pleasure to come to you, and I hope that this, you know, this message, you know, brought some uh, enlightenment into your life, and uh, may the Lord bless you, and uh, as you continue to surrender your life to His will. Praise God. Okay, until next time.